Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. A couple days ago, the first official trailer for Mockingjay Part 2 came out. I can't even. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this movie to come out. This was the first book I read that made me cry. A lot of people didn't really like Mockingjay as a book. However, I was just so emotionally invested and emotionally attached to those characters. And I was just so fangirl crushing on PETA. He's just the most perfect, wonderful, sweet, endearing 16-year-old boy on the face of the planet. Even though he isn't even real, he's not on this planet. But regardless, you know what I'm trying to say. If this book made me cry, I mean, I seriously couldn't even get through the epilogue because I was I was crying so hard that I couldn't see to read the epilogue. I can only imagine how this movie's gonna make me feel. I'm expecting to feel the feels. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I've been waiting until I had time to sit down to film a first reaction for you. Let's get to it. Plug in the headphones right into there. Oh, Lego. Yes, he does. Damn right. Oh my gosh, that's the girl from Game of Thrones, Brianna Tarth. Oh, she looks good. God. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is that? Oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> oh my gosh. Mm, I'm just like emotional thinking about what we're going to experience in that movie. Gosh! Okay. So I did reread Mockingjay oh, last, was it last fall, right before the movie came out. So it's fairly fresh in my mind. I, I'm i so, so excited. I think it's going to transition into a film so much better than it did in the book. Because the first one in general was so much more, mm, it was just a, such a better story for Phil. Like the whole scene in the first movie where Gale is infiltrating the capital to get PETA was like a sentence in a book. And it was amazing how they turned that into an action scene with Finnick's monologue over it. Oh, 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 oh. So good. So, so they open with Finnick and Annie's wedding scene, which I'm so excited to see because it, I don't remember it being very detailed or explained a lot in the book. It's gonna be like the one shining light of happiness in this movie. I'm so excited that they're gonna give us some semblance of a happy moment in this movie because the rest of it is just really dark. It looks like it's underground in District 13 and they threw in some fake grass and some fake trees. And is way more elaborate than what the book describes it as being. I don't even think that they like had any decorations in the book. And now we had the camera peeps with why are so Game of Thrones cast just in like everything right now? Marjorie plays the camera woman who I don't remember her name. It's escaping my brain. Peter Baelish is in the new Scorch Trials. We'll get to the other one in a minute. Lovely Miss Marjorie from Game of Thrones standing next to the guy from Mighty Ducks holding the little camera light beam things. Oh, it's so sweet. It's Oh, it's so sweet. Oh, and then there's dancing and then there's a scene of them dancing at the reception. I'm so, so excited to see that wedding scene. I oh, oh. And now we have Effie in a very fringed out dress. I mean, you want to talk about a fringe child? That dress was made for a fringe child. Standing next to Katniss, who is in her Mockingjay gear. And I really like that they kept Effie for the movie Mockingjay because in the book, after the fall of District 13. I mean, Effie doesn't make an appearance in the books. She's just not in Mockingjay at all. In the book, she's replaced with a different stylist. Oh, I can't even remember what the stylist name is. I think it's Peta Stylist becomes stylist for Katniss. And it made so much more sense in the movie to keep Effie instead of bringing in a new character who we don't really know anything about. Just strengthen their bond and I appreciate that, movie filmmakers. That was a smart decision on your part because I didn't care about the other woman pretty much at all. Oh, look at that. She's like a permanent costume. She is always ready for Halloween. Snow has to pay for what he's done. Yes, he does. Ooh, one way or another, this war is going to come to an end. Ooh. Now we have people standing outside in an urban area. They're all cheering on a speaker who I cannot tell who that is. We all have one enemy! So it looks like now we are in the capital and Snow is hosting a little dinner party. Why is he a time for dinner parties? He's like, has entire rebellion on his heels and he's just serving dinner with a bunch of diplomats. I wonder who he's serving this dinner to. 
It's a very elaborate dining hall, though. Dang, Snow. He's drinking out of his little wine glass. I wonder if he's drinking some poison. Getting his daily dose of poison. More dancing, more, oh, Prim and Katniss are hugging the reception, I'm assuming, because where else would they be dancing? Brienne of Tarth. That's the other Game of Thrones character. I wonder who she's playing. She's wearing like a fur coat-ish thing. Ooh, building gets blown up and it falls down. And then there's a scene of Katniss walking down the center of the capital where they had the chariots come in for catching fire. And Katniss is in that amazing dress. With, oh my god, the hair, the makeup, the dress in that scene. But she's walking down all by herself. She ain't got no horse and got no chariot. Everybody behind her, it looks like from all the different districts, are converging to support her. And she looks good. Drawing her bow, returning the weapons to the capital. I wonder if that's the scene at the end with the arrow. No, it can't be. That wouldn't make... No, they wouldn't put that in the trailer. Her makeup looked so on point in that scene where she's drawing back the bowstring. Oh, look, there's Peta. And he's hugging her and not trying to kill her. We've made progress. Comes the event. Ooh, things blowing up. The world has been waiting for. It's almost the end of an era. Now we have Robin Hood chilling in his little cloak. I mean, that's appropriate. He shot arrows. I mean, looks like Robin Hood. Meet Star Wars. Ooh, that's Katniss. It is not Robin Hood. And it's probably a cloak that she got from the Fur Lady shop. I hope that they make her look like a cat. We have explosions. We have Gale and Katniss running for cover. We have Snow with his charming smile. Ooh, and then we have one of the camera crew members step on the booby-trapped streets. So much epicness. This book's version of the Hunger Games is in them getting to the capital. Oh, epicness. Ooh, and then we have the tar coming down and through the streets and chasing the civilians and it hits the wall. Oh, welcome to the 76th Hunger Games. Whoosh! Title logo. Logo for this movie has more flames than any of the other ones, which makes sense because it's the big finale. It's the explosive event of the century. Added more flames. Made the fire bigger. I mean, it just like personifies the whole series. But in theaters November 20th. Ah! So many emotions. Oh my gosh, there's gonna be so many emotions. I don't know if I'm gonna handle it. They include the epilogue in this movie. I will probably be crying through the whole end of the movie. That was a really well done trailer. Good job, people. Round of applause. I felt the camaraderie and the rebellion and the anger very excited for this wedding scene. One happy thing that happens in the last half of the book, because let's be real, we're gonna have a big giant war, big giant battle scene. I'm really excited to see that one just like last moment of calm before the explosion takes over. Be sure to tell me what your favorite part of this trailer was and what you thought when you saw it, because I was shocked that it was as long as it was. It's like an actual full length trailer. <sighs> I can't believe this is it. This is the end of the Hunger Games. This is the last one. It's the end of an era. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye. Where they had the chariots in Game of Fire. Game of Fire. <laughs> Thinking back, all the booby trap scenes in the book were slightly terrifying. I wouldn't want to be caught in any of those. I mean, no, no thank you. I don't want to be impaled or trapped in tar or whatever other things that happens to them. I hate people interrupt me because I just forget what I'm doing. And that just takes me longer to do this. And I remember sitting in my dorm room, my roommate being like, what are you doing? Like, it's, it's just, it's so beautiful and so sad. And that was pretty much, pretty much my reaction to the end of that book. I can't whistle, so I'm not even gonna try. I'm so sick and tired of these ads. I just don't know if I should...